wish that I could fly up to the sky so very high just like a dragonfly Welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at cool tech and science from your favorite movies, video games, books, and comics, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Do you want to get away with a jetpack? Today, I've got theoretical physicist extraordinaire Sean Carroll on to discuss the future of personal jetpack propulsion technology. Hi, Sean. Thank you so much for joining us. I really enjoyed your TED Talk, Cosmology in the Era of Time. Thanks. It's good to be here. So we've seen jetpacks in cinema, comics, and video games for years now. It's one of the most desired things in technology for people for the future. Where do we currently stand with this technology? It's one of those things that it's not against any laws of nature or anything like that. It's not like time travel or warp drive or uh, any of those other completely crazy ideas. You can build a jetpack. It's just it turns out not to be the best way to get around. So we're not that well suited for personal air flight, I guess, is, is what it kind of comes down to. I remember a couple years ago, I posted a, a video of some guy testing out a jetpack and someone left a comment, someday we will all be dying this way. <laughs> so they already exist and some are in production. For instance, Martin Jetpack seems to be one of the pioneering companies. Um, in your opinion, how can the laws of physics be applied to further advance these systems going forward? Well, that would be the big hope, right, is that we discover new things, uh, you know, we understand gravity better or the Higgs boson, which I'm interested in thinking about. Maybe there's some way you can just make people lighter and make it easier to levitate and jetpack around. I think, again, the answer there is going to be no. Uh, it's, there's nothing in new physics that we're studying today that makes it easier for people to levitate off the ground. Can you explain a little bit about how these jetpacks work and how you see them evolving? Well, it is interesting. People are trying, because you never know when there's a breakthrough that won't, that won't change how we do things. The Martin jetpack that you mentioned looks to me to be one of the most interesting on the market. And it's not a jetpack at all. It's a little helicopter with little uh, air uh, propellers, basically. But it looks to be relatively safe, and it flies for about half an hour. Some of the other competing things, you spend $200,000, you get something that will take you up for 30 seconds or thereabouts. So maybe helicopter packs are what we should be aiming at. So something used by like the Rocketeer, for example, that's definitely much more of a jetpack kind of device is less on the on the on the side of, of possibility than something that's more helicopter based. That's right. I mean, if you just imagine looking at the space shuttle or a Saturn V rocket, it's almost all fuel, right? That just requires that much fuel to get around if you're just burning fuel and throwing it out the back. And so for a human-powered jetpack, your choices are either a huge amount of fuel and a very dangerous, very powerful engine, or a small amount of fuel and you get to fly for 30 seconds. So as awesome as it would be to commute via jetpack, I'm sure the military probably has more important uses for that kind of technology. Well, the military, you know, they're great at developing new technologies, and they have certainly looked into the jetpack thing. Uh, once again, when you have drones and helicopters and supersonic jets, why bother, you know, carrying this heavy and very fragile cargo around called the human being uh, by jetpack. But on the other hand, NASA, of course, uses jetpacks all the time. When the astronauts are doing their extravehicular activities, that's essentially what they're doing. They're shooting themselves around with little jetpacks. So it's a lot easier when gravity is less of an issue. That's exactly right. Once you're up in orbit, then the jetpack becomes pr uh, practical. So unfortunately, of course, these puppies are going to cost around $100,000 for a consumer model. Do you see that that is ever something that's going to come out of the realm of, of collector edition or, or special item? Or is it going to be in the consumer market ever? You know, it, it could, honestly. That's the kind of thing that we're very bad at predicting. When you can do something, when you know that it's feasible and it's just expensive, Generally, it gets cheaper as people develop it. So it's certainly not out of the realm of possibilities that the jetpacks will become affordable. It might be that individual jetpacks, besides being staggeringly dangerous and impractical, never quite get into the realm of the pocketbook of the average consumer. So in your, your own opinion, why do you think people's minds are so captured by these devices? It's just freedom. It's personal freedom, right? I mean, you just want to get around without bumping into traffic. Uh, you know, without having to worry about finding parking. Uh, the jetpack of science fiction is person-sized. That's what makes it so attractive. To be able to just get up there and fly all by yourself, who wouldn't want to do that? So, Sean, after this discussion, would you say that the jetpack is something that's fact or fictional? 
the jetpack is fact. It's just not a very practical kind of fact. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Where can people follow your work online? Uh, my website is preposterousuniverse.com, and the new book is called The Particle at the End of the Universe. And do you want your face on Fact or Fictional? Let me know what tech and science you want to see right here on the show. If it's good enough, you might see yourself on a future episode. Until next week, I'm Veronica Belmont, and this is Fact or Fictional on Tech Feed. Be sure to subscribe to see all of our great new shows. I'll see you next time. Did you look at that and say, like, oh, that's child's play, or, or is that something that wouldn't have been possible, given the kind of network she was probably on? I, you know, I can't speculate on to what kind of mysterious network MI6, fictional or non-fictional, may have. 